Well, so this week we did uh, 12 Angry Men, or as Nick's yep. now dubbed this section, 12 Angry Men. Absolutely. <laughs> and that right there is um, the, <laughs> that is the golden comedy that you're subscribed for. <laughs> uh, no refunds. <laughs> okay, so 12 Angry so, Men. Yeah, so for those who don't haven't seen it, um, 12 Angry Men is uh, Sidney Lumet's debut feature from 1957, seven. might be six. Um, so the plot concerns uh, this jury of 12 men who have to do- agree on the conviction of um, this young boy who supposedly stabbed his father. Um, suppose it's an open and shut case. There's been witness testimonies. They're sure he's, he's guilty. And 11 of them say he is guilty, except one who's not sure and thinks they should maybe talk it out before they sentence this boy to death so quickly. And thus, they discuss it and things begin to unravel. Yeah. Um, so, Andrew... Yes. What did you think of 12 Angry Men? Uh, I thought it was brilliant. Excellent. So did I. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. It's definitely, you can tell it's an old film, obviously because it's black and white and completely different aspect ratio. It was very strange. Um, I don't know if you saw the photo I um, sent you, but I was playing it. You sent me a photo? Yeah, the DVD. Um, on my 4K TV, and it was appeared in a tiny box in the center of the screen. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's just how I had to watch it. Oh, um, I mean, you probably change the settings on your TV if that's happening. Yeah, um, it is in 166 to one, I believe, rather than um, 178. So it's in a, it's a weird, it's, it's it's an unusual ratio. Yeah, but yeah, um, no, um, it, it it was very good. The pacing is it definitely starts very slowly, and then picks up and just gets really tense also just really good and I feel like the best part about it is definitely the script it's, yeah it's you know it's brilliant the, the writing is fantastic mm. there's so many really satisfying moments of it well um, yeah some bits were literally made me just be like oh <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, the knife moment. The knife moment. Every is time, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Every time I watch it, I'm just like, oh yeah. <laughs> but you know the bit. It's such a great moment. Yeah. The guy that's really angry about everything. Yeah. Well, there's two of them, aren't there? Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the yeah. guy that gives up last, basically. Yes. Uh, I think he's called Jura Four. No, Jura uh, yeah, Three. I think he's yeah, it's two or three. He's one of them. Yeah. yeah. He, he's like absolutely. 100% sure that this guy's guilty and he's not giving up and he's uh, argues the most and he starts shouting at everyone and you know there's a, this um, what my one of my favourite bits was how he is what he was like oh, I'm absolutely sure because there there's multiple witness who heard the fight go on between the the boy who's accused and the dad who died um, yeah and they heard the boy shout, I'm going to kill you. Or I could kill you. Or no, I think it's, yeah, I'm going to kill you. Um, yeah, that's and it's right. like someone who's known the boy his, their whole life and it's like, they're 100% sure it was his voice. Uh, and Henry Fonda, who's the main character, is like, well, you know, we all say that from time to time. You know, oh, you're so annoying, I'm going to kill you or whatever. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, but this guy... Is a you know known to use a knife. He definitely you know he wouldn't say that. It was they were shouting at each other. It was in a fight. And um, there's this, and then about I don't know twenty thirty minutes later, there's this excellent bit where Henry Fonda just riles him up so much and you know sets him up and like starts slagging him off. And he, juror number three, <laughs> jumps up and is like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, "Oh, but you wouldn't actually kill me, though, would you?" <laughs> it's just like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. I, I feel like mm. <laughs> somewhere on the internet exists an air horn dub of this film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can make it out. <laughs> yeah. Just there's so many bits where you mm. feel like there's an air horn going off somewhere. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so another bit. I feel like. It was absolutely amazing as well, like towards the end. Um, so there's this guy who's been, I mean, he's just like openly racist throughout. Yes. Uh, and he is again, he's one of them. He's like refusing to say that this guy's not guilty, all of the things. But he 
isn't like listening to reason. His only reason behind why he thinks this guy is guilty is because he's he's black. It's like that's like it's literally his whole reason. Yeah, it's basically he's always like those people always do that. They're always like that. This is how. Like, it's like he, yeah, he's like oh yeah. they can't help it. They're just born that way. They are just exactly. Yeah. It's in their nature to be, to you know to be evil or whatever. Hmm. And there's just this absolutely fantastic bit. And I feel like this that that scene alone is like so incredibly important for modern times. I think. Yeah. Because so they they do this bit where. Um, like one by one, all of the other of the other jurors stand up and walk away from the table, and yeah. just face away from him. Uh, and the I guys like that's... shouting about it, this racist tirade, tirade, and they just they just stand up and walk away, and they just don't listen to him. Yeah, and it's so incredibly good because it completely breaks him. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just, great to watch him just like trickle down slowly, sort of like you losing pace of what he's saying as everyone leaves one by one. Yeah, even the ones who are like who think he's guilty still, yeah, just, like will not give him the time of day. And yeah, won't give just, him like, it's just such a powerful just, moment. It's so good. That bit again was again just such an excellent moment in it because it's like there's especially in that moment, like through the other bits. Uh, like Henry Fonda and some of the other people have, sh- have shouted back and there's been like this rapport between them but in that bit it's like just this racist tirade like the absolute best way to deal with it is just ignore it and it, he yeah. loses all of his power and exactly. I just thought that bit in particular was is so poignant nowadays with you know loads of this stuff still going on with especially with the internet and people banging on about it and for some reason that racist old man reminded me of donald trump i can you wonder oh, I why i can't imagine why <laughs> yeah um but i think in many ways it's it's quite ahead of its time socially as well because i've yeah think about it, the, is, the, yeah. The, the 50s is when the sort of the idea of a teenager was really entering the mainstream and there's this big sort of ages and gap and like the sort of the sphere of the youth yeah, um, you think things like Rebel Without a Cause, which yeah. came out like maybe a couple of years before. They also use "kid" as an insult as well. Like, oh, he's just yeah. a kid, you know. Uh, a lot from the same character, but a lot of them do it as well. Um, and there's a lot of ages and going. Actually, both the young and the old, because there's the older juror who also gets like you know talked down to a lot and really married. Yeah, 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 yeah. All basically because he's like, oh, you're an old man. What do you know, kind of thing. And yeah. On the same level, they're like talking. Oh, he must have done. It. He's a kid. All kids are like that. They won't listen to their parents. They won't call me sir. All that kind of thing. I yeah. think it's really interesting. A film that was right on the forefront of that kind of time is making such sort of, uh, you know, make such a case about ageism and showing it in such a negative light. But what what amazed me as well was like the the complete lack of racism, like the complete damnation of racism as well. Like yeah, and again, for we're really time. early on in yeah, because that would be just at the beginning of the civil rights movement. Like, yeah, it would be fresh out of the. But there's there's absolutely no racial slurs at all, which blew my mind. Like genuinely blew my mind. Yeah, I thought he was gonna have this racial tirade and and, and use racial slurs left, right, and centre, but he didn't. There was no racial slurs mm. as, at all. That he was just said those people. Yeah, those and that, but that's all you need because the thing is, if you do a racial slur, most of them are generally about a specific type of person. Yeah, but because he says those people, it applies to any minority race or minority gender or minority anything yeah, it's a, it, yeah it applies universally that whole and that's one thing that so works so well about the script of it yeah um i thought yeah overall absolutely brilliant i i strongly encourage anyone who hasn't seen it to watch it even for just that scene because that again like as i say i think like so poignant and, and powerful for, for nowadays mm. Even still, like how many years ago? Uh, so almost, so it'd be almost over sixty years yeah, old. Yeah, over sixty-three years. Something like that. Yeah. Like that's amazing, isn't it? Hmm. So, um, on this watch for in particular, something that I really sort of, I really appreciate is the fact that it, the, you know, besides the opening and like the last shot of the film, it's all in this one courthouse room. Yes. And it's, there's the occasional diagram that we get seen as evidence to show, like, yeah. Of, because they discussed this case of this murder happening in a flat next to an L train line. And the fact is, I don't know about you, but I can so vividly see... Yeah, me like, too. Like, every aspect of that flat. I can see everything. I And I've got images of... And, it's, and we never see any of it. Yeah. For a film that's... For a visual medium, to paint such a vivid image in my head without actually showing me anything at all, really, about it. Just through talking and describing it so well. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I think that's really interesting how well it does that. And it, you know, it it creates like a world within its own world. Yeah. 
And yeah, yeah. It's and absolutely also just the, brilliant. The way they just deconstruct the crime as well is like it takes so much skill as a writer to write a case that can on the front see so clear cut but unravels so well. Just like so, such minor details. Like with the thing, the glasses is such a good one as well. Yes, That's another like, that oh, oh shit kind of moment. Yeah, like they're just the teardowns are, are hmm. fantastic as well. I think they're yeah. just so good. Um, also, the, another moment that sticks out to me is when they recreate the um, the walk out of the flat and yeah. they time it. Yeah. I imagine that must, well, the time they give is must be in real time for how long this job actually took. Yeah. But I do, I do love that because there's such suspense in it as well. Like you feel yeah. yourself counting along <laughs> trying to work it all out. And I love that you get so involved in the room with the whole investigation, you start thinking, theorising, and even on my third viewing, I still don't remember all the facts and all the things they came up with. It's, ah, uh, it's just a really well-crafted film. Yeah, it genuinely is. It's everything about it is, is quality. Yeah. Um, my only sort of um, issue with it is it's, it ends quite suddenly, I think. Yeah, I do think... The, so the, the, the end with um, the final juror being converted... Yes, but he sort of, obviously, he sort it's of like converts himself. Yeah, but he goes it's, on, it's, he's, you know, shouting about people, and he's got the picture of his son in his wallet, and he rips it up, and then he's just like, "Oh, not guilty." And I was yeah, like, it's, it sort of comes out of nowhere, you know. Mm, it it does feel a bit like we have to wrap this up now, kind of thing. Yeah. Which is strange because it's quite a short film. Yeah, but yeah. I do agree. It's a slightly uns- after everything that comes before, and how tense and sort of hard boiled it gets. How sort of it ends, yeah, quite abruptly. Yeah. Um, bit, yeah. I do actually have a recommendation for you, Nick. Oh, yeah? Because if you like that film, um, you would really like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Oh, yes, that is on my list, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah I think I've got it on DVD, actually. Yeah, I mean, you should absolutely watch Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, because that is, okay. um, again, like, it's not... In st- I mean, the play that it's based on is set in one room, or set in one house, I should say. Uh, yeah. The film does move around, but it's still got the same feeling of this, the four characters tra- trapped together in the same place with no one else, no other other characters coming in. And it's just talking and, you know, it's discovering what happened, blah, blah, you know, stuff like that. And it's, it's yeah, yeah in a very similar vein. Very, very good. Um, so okay. that's a recommendation for you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so... I imagine I know the answer to this, but final verdict. Do you think 12 Angry Men is worthy of being called a classic? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Absolutely here as well. Yeah. Great. I can't think of a, another courtroom drama, <laughs> I guess, that I would... is better than that. So, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, but again, there's nothing... Well, I say there's nothing really like it. I've just suggested you something that's very similar <laughs> to it. But I mean, in the... Uh, you know, like the court drama world, it's always about the lawyers and all that. It's like, it was very interesting to have something about the jurors who are just... Yeah, who are just essentially, you know, normal people from yeah. various backgrounds yeah. who have no real law knowledge to try and figure this out. Yeah. And the fact they they work out so much more than the real lawyers actually did or yeah. refused to, you know, that's... Yeah. I just lo- also love how, you know, even the man... Um, so Juror 3 is, is an executioner. Yes. You know, and that's like a big point. It's like, oh, why do you want this man to die so much? Are, are you an, the, the executioner? He's like, yes. I mean, I am an executioner. <laughs> and he's like, mm-hmm. so he's used to death. And he's used to killing or putting uh, uh, criminals to death. And it's like, so you can sort of see from his point of view, you know, why he's it's like, I don't want a, to let someone uh, who's a, a criminal go or whatever. Yeah. Um. But there's just excellent morals to the film, and it just shows you deep down, all twelve of them do have morals. Obviously, some of them have much lower morals than others, but it's yeah. like at the end but of the day, inter- they are all human, and they all do have vaguely the same morals that can all be pulled together to protect a- an innocent mm. person. And it's interesting to see what is the you know what item of whatever is the thing that tips off each juror into turning to innocent. And yeah. in particular, the one that the the uh, moment I really like of that is um the one who's desperate to go to the baseball game is like you know what whatever it's innocent and it's like okay well are you saying innocent because you believe he's innocent or because you want to get out of here? Because if it's just the latter, yeah. 
don't say guilt say guilty if you mean guilty don't just change your mind because you don't care because that's barbaric considering what we're talking about here yeah yeah, like yeah. that mo- that's another really fantastic moment and again and like yeah. kind of ahead of its time in a way again yeah that's what i was gonna say because um i mean that same character the one who just wants to get out of there the baseball fan um yeah he again has um a tirade because uh, one of the other jurors is is an immigrant and he's like oh yeah. immigrants tell me they're taking our jobs and just like the that the the immigrant man is so morally superior in every single way yeah. to him in that that moment Plus, he's also he's probably one of the most intelligent ones in the room. Yeah, as well. Like he seems the most sort of like, like one of the wisest ones there, the one who can think through and actually knows what he's doing. Well, the others seem quite childish in many ways. Yeah, he seems like an actual adult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 